Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today, uh, in honor of my upcoming infrared workshop, I'm going to examine an infrared capture and look at the whole post-processing workflow in Lightroom. If you're really interested in infrared, you should consider enrolling in my online course, or, or hey, if you're in the Boston area, Sign up for my workshop this coming weekend at Tower Hill Botanic Gardens. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, let's dig in. So here in Lightroom is my capture, and uh, I was, you know, I was taken by the leading lines here, which, which follow the edge of this little pond right up to uh, another photographer who's sort of walking back into the landscape there. And um, this is pretty much the capture as it looks to me in the camera. Uh, I'm shooting with a mirrorless, a Fuji mirrorless uh, X-Pro2, I should say. And um, this is kind of what I see. It's a 590 uh, nanometer infrared conversion. So I'm getting a little bit of yellow light and a little bit of red light as well as the infrared light, which sort of skews everything. You can kind of see the, the foliage is, is, is uh, registering lighter than normal because it's reflecting a lot of infrared energy. So um, usually first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll think about the crop. And since, um, since this is a vertical, I normally kind of go for an eight by 10 crop. And mostly because that's, uh, that's what Instagram favors for, for portrait mode uh, uh, crops. And I'm, I'm gonna, since the, the, you know, the trees are the thing that are really interesting here, the clouds and the trees, I'm just gonna sort of maximize it like this. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just go and accept that crop. Now I have to think about my general approach to this uh, for the color. And I have a custom, profile in, in, in Lightroom they're called profile is it it's a lookup table that that adjusts the values of these uh, color temperature sliders so the temperature and tint slider at the moment if I wanted to kind of neutralize this I would get the eyedropper tool and uh, generally for infrared we try to neutralize to the color of the foliage so I click on this it does shift it over but it maxes out here I can't get it to go any further over on the color temperature than this 2000 uh, now we'll just undo that this is back to the way it was shot if I switch to my X Pro 2 infrared lookup table it's off it's it, it's slightly more colorful looking but what happens when I use the white balance tool to neutralize the foliage and you'll see now the slider setting has completely different numbers um, and if I click to neutralize this uh, I get a much sort of cleaner color in the infrared areas and my sky is sort of more yellow this is very typical of color infrared where we're getting a sort of cool warm uh, color crossover it's completely false but um, this is the way infrared looks so we're gonna we're gonna use this approach uh, with my custom lookup table I'll put some links in the description about where you can get these things uh, I'm a, a big fan of Rob Shea's uh, lookup table so I'll put that link in the description all right now Overall, uh, it, you know, it seems like a, a pretty reasonable exposure. It's very flat looking, and this is pretty typical of infrared. Um, and I have a completely different strategy for dealing with infrared rather than regular photography. And, and I sort of counterintuitively, I'm actually going to make the contrast less contrasty. Initially, I'm going to reduce the highlights. You know, puts a little more meat in the sky. And I'm going to open up the shadows all the way. So now I've actually made the image much flatter, um, but I'm going to add the contrast back using these present sliders. So we're going to crank the uh, clarity all the way up. And uh, to put a little more dark contrast into it, I'm going to use the dehaze slider. And you see that's starting to bring that, 
those tones down, put some more contrast back in, but it does it in a very um, different way. So it kind of keeps local areas, it keeps more contrast in the local areas and put, sort of like enhances the detail. Um, now, I'm looking at this and thinking, yeah, I mean, I can, I can maybe increase the vibrance, get that blue looking a little, little brighter. Um, but I'm going to go now to the color mixer area and I, and kind of play with the hue and saturation and brightness of the, of these two color ranges. So I've got these sort of warm colors in the sky and the water and the cool colors in the foliage. Let's just see what kind of trouble I can get into here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to work with luminance first. So I'm going to go over to the luminance area here and I'm going to get the target adjustment tool here, this little uh, kind of circle thing with arrows. I'm going to bring that into the image. I'll place the X over the color that I want to adjust and I'm going to click and drag down because I want this, this brown color to be even darker. And then I'm going to want the, the cool color to be brighter. So I'm clicking and dragging up and you can kind of see how the sliders are adjusting. So I'm going to get that blue pretty much all the way up there. Maybe bring, slide this aqua slide over, over just a little more and my yellow slider down even more. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of, going in opposite directions. I'm making the sky darker and the leaves lighter, which gives it that otherworldly quality that I am, I'm enjoying in the infrared. Um, now let's, let's play around with the hue. So I'm thinking right now I, I'd like to pursue a sort of orange and teal uh, color scheme and sort of classic. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to get my target adjustment tool again. And I'm going to come up here and just let's let's try and get this a little redder, a little more orangey. Uh, and the the blue, I'm going to push it more towards the teal area. So you see, I'm going kind of more towards the the greenish, getting that sort of teal color going on in there. Uh, and let's uh, let's zoom in here to 100 percent. Let's just kind of see what it's looking like over here. Yeah, very cool. All right. I'm starting to get where where I where I want it. However, I still want to get a little more brightness uh, in the blue area. So I'm mean, thinking I'm gonna use a mask. So we'll go up here to the mask panel. And I really want to select the the foliage, the blue color, and I want to get that even snappier. Um, but it, I, I have to select the sky. I have to select everything but the blue. Um, and we can use, well, actually, let's, let's target the color range. So, I mean, I could select the sky and then invert it, but let's, let's see what happens if I target the color range. So I go down here to the range, and I'm going to target a color range. And let's just click on a blue here. And I think I've got pretty good selection already. So I can refine it up here can refine the range, but I've already got a good selection going there. So, so, all right, so let's see, let's, let's crank up, I'll take the white slider and really brighten this up. And maybe, uh, maybe we'll put a little more um, clarity in it to enhance that sort of local contrast. All right. Well, that's cool. I think, I think I've got, I think I've got this where I want it. The last thing I'll do, and I, I, I look at doing this almost every time, especially for landscape images. I'm going to go in and look at putting a, um, a post crop vignette in there. So I darken the edges just a little bit. It helps to kind of bring your eye into the center of the image. And uh, okay, I'm, I'm thinking I'm liking that pretty good. Maybe just a little more. Very dramatic there. And uh, let's just go into uh, fill. 
get a feeling for this image. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I kind of, I could break, maybe emphasize this guy, but I'm going to leave him like that. It's a little, uh, not, not so obvious, but he's, he's there and the leading lines bring you right up into him. Let's go ahead and fit this back in. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. Hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative exploration. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.